Hello there, everybody, and welcome back once again to Space Engineers. Um. Well, that's a problem. You join me and the gloriously reborn Scarab today for some high-octane gaming, and oh no, that is... Probably not the ideal start, I'm not gonna lie, <laughs> but extremely far for the course. At least we didn't lose the tools, that's that's what matters to me, baby. I'm a, I'm a simple man with simple desires, and one of them is to hit the brakes before we die again. Oh, oh, what's that over there? My, 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 do I spy before my very little eye? A platypus? Barry the platypus! A structure of some description, interesting. Okay, well, I guess we're going to coast over that way very, very, very slowly. Uh, it is not lost on me that uh, we do need to expand the grinders. I have a pretty sneaking suspicion that, no, they're not not—they're not quite going to reach past that left-hand wheel. Thank you to everybody who suggested wonderful things in the comment section of the previous episode. We had lots of great ideas coming through for how we can work on the Scarab, how we can make stuff better. You guys absolutely rock, so we're going to be looking at some of those as we go along. Uh, also, apologies for my incredibly groggy voice and mind last time. I was uh, in between rushing to get the episode recorded and being uh, sick again. Uh, it was, wasn't all that easy to, to put together a coherent thought. Not even one of them. Not even once. Anyway, that nightmare is behind us, and in front of us is this platform, uh, which is very interesting in design. Also, I see a boulder over there, and we now know that we are boulder gamers. We are able to pick them up. I don't need more nickel, though, or arbor breaking. Sorry, tree. Uh, we barely knew ya. Okay, let's, let's pull up next to this platform and just see what it's got cooking for us. I'm interested. Uh, I have. It has also been pointed out, um, not by anyone in the comments section, astonishingly, but just by myself, that we have done an incredibly small amount of roving in Rover Quest. We've mostly just driven around that lake for about 10 episodes. So uh, I, I hope to rectify that today. I hope we're going to do a little bit more traveling while we build out the Scarab. Uh, I did do a little bit of greebling off camera. As you can see, we've just got some lights on the tower. We've got some lights on our tools. I'm not sold on the colors and stuff. It's mostly just to say that we're doing something with it. And let's investigate here. What We've got what looks like the start of a highway platform, which, uh, you know, that's kind of cool on its own. We've got some interior plates, some construction components. We've got... Oh, dude, we've got the camper van? Hold the front door. Forget the Kepri son. This... This shall be our new <laughs> deliverance. Oh, Lord, it's got a spare, spare wheel. I'm in love. I'm in love. Hold on, get me in. What have we got? A survival kit, too? Listen, I'm a simple man. I'm a, is a battery? Oh, baby. Hold on now. We could, we could refurbish it. <gasps> what have we got in here? Some other remains of a survival kit. A, a far more crashed vehicle. The idea that all these people just had survival kits built into their cars is infinitely funny to me. But I know what I must do. Local man promises to drive around more often, immediately stops to do something else. I mean, if that isn't the core of this channel and playthrough, I, I, I genuinely don't know what is. Man, it is, it is nice to be doing some cerebellum gaming again, TM. By the way, that is a trademark term. Do not steal it. All four wrinkles in my brain are fully unfolded. We are, we are, we are moving at max speed. If you're wondering why I'm cutting off that precious, precious uh, docking arm, it's because, well, uh, it doesn't exactly reach the intended target anymore, does it? No, instead, we're going to, we're going to probably to redesign that from the ground up. Parts of this are probably going... I mean, the antenna's definitely not staying there. I do like the mining arm. The mining arm stays, okay? The mining arm stays on during sex. No, this is not moving. We are going to, of course, change the turret. Some dude um, rather rudely pointed out that the reason we couldn't aim lower than that is because of the uh, height of the hinge, and they're correct. They just didn't have to say it that way, is all I'm saying. There's a human being on the other side of this camera, and we do read all your comments. And I still make the mistake of treating every person that interact, interfaces with this channel like a human being, even though that courtesy is certainly not reciprocated. <clears throat> anyway, um, immediate derailment aside, I do need to make a little crane to get that lad onto here. So this is not permanent, uh, which is, uh, t again, another great title for this series. <laughs> but we're going to be grabbing, we're going to be doing our best to grab that truck. So we'll need, uh, we'll need a rotor to start with, for sure. And then I guess a couple pistons, and then I guess a couple more pistons after that. Okay, great. Let's go and grab our ship here. 
I don't think it's going to be much of a problem, but uh, you never know, I'm always able to. Uh, I have a great track record of destroying everything I touch. Do we got the turning circle for this? I don't think we got the turning circle for this. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be real with you. We do not have the turning circle for this. Is that my problem? I don't think so. <laughs> Okay, turns out it is. I thought we could drive through it. I don't know why. This really is a highway to nowhere. Like, where was this going? I don't know, but I want to go there too. Get me out of here, please. All right, let's go. I guess we're going to do this O manuel just because I'm lazy to set up the controls, considering this thing's temporary. Okay, expand that out. And then I guess the easy solution here is to just set the, the limit on how far it's allowed to go. Yeah, whatever that length is, is probably good. Eight meters. Okay, bring it down. Bring it down to like eight, reverse, and send it back. Cool. That should. Oh, we can probably we can probably do 8.5. Okay, then you can reverse, and I kind of want to just drop your total torque by a significant amount here. I really don't want this thing pushing that hard. It's going to just crush this otherwise. You know what? Drop it even further. 100 newtons is as low as it goes. Okay, you're going to reach. Just, just. Oh, we locked it. It's perfect. It's literally perfect. Okay, reverse up. Oh, and now we'll, okay, now we might need a bit more torque. He's coming on up. Incredible. Okay, great. And then we can reverse this and rotate this around. Ah, go the other way. And rotor lock on. That's not, that doesn't do what I thought it did. That doesn't do what I thought it did. That doesn't do what I thought it did. Go the other way, go the other way, go the other way, go the other way. Oh. <laughs> okay, now before we drop this thing, we're going to want to need to add the wheels again. So, add a wheel. Thank you. Slightly less rusty. Add a wheel, add a wheel, add a wheel. Gorgeous. And then we can slowly but surely lower you down. And with this is definitely what we're going to want to use the maximum height controls for. Okay, and I think that's far enough. Let's get those wheels built, and then we we should just be able to drop this thing. Very cool. Perfect. All right, let's uh, let's. We don't need the crane for now, so I'm just gonna stow this. But I'm not gonna remove it just yet. We might we might have other use for this for now. I think we'll just uh, we'll have it facing the other way. Perfect. That could just get stowed right over there. Now let's take a look at our quarry here. What did we score? So it's busted. I'll tell you that much for free. And it could certainly use some more love. Well, maybe maybe we do use the welders. Maybe all we need to do, though, is just get this thing, like, drive-worthy. So we pretty much just need the battery and the, the control seat, right? And then it should be able to, to get working. Okay, hop on in. Perfect. And then we can work on the ramp. Okay, well, hold on. Let's go update the lists and also move the lists. Uh, I did have some great suggestions for where we can put the lists, uh, which I'd love to explore right now. All right, a bit of a side project there. I wasn't expecting to, to find something so cool so quickly, but I'm really happy we did. Okay, so there was a fantastic suggestion, which was to put the uh, to put the LCDs near the bathroom here, which I've already got on the hot bar, the toilet. Uh, and we could, we could call it the contemplation chamber, which is a fantastic idea. So I think we can cut that out, right? We'll be able to get the toilet in there, and then I think we can get a shower in here. So I guess I want to make the LCDs into into the walls for this space, right? So we could probably have them like there and there. I don't know if the game's going to let me do that. So maybe we swap this. Hold on, I've got a better idea. It's a tough ask because it has to be visible both from the throne. Aha! Yes, this is the way. It must be visible from the throne and from the, the, the runway. So we don't have to always sit in said throne in order to make it happen. Now we are gaming. And then I guess, you know what we can do? We can put the shower on this side. Yeah, 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 yeah. What if, what if, shower goes right there. And now the space is functional. And now the space is functional. Okay, okay. Hold on, that, now I say that, the shower could also just go right over here, couldn't it? It was at this moment that he knew. Glass door shower, glass door shower. Oh my god, he's a genius. L, C, D. Get the transparent ones. I, I take back everything I said. And we can see the shower through the, oh, it's all perfect. It's all covered together. And then you know what this would be a really good spot to have? Is an armory. I can never find a good use for these things. And now, what better, what better place to have that than right over there, huh? Very cool. Okay, we've got a, it's very, it's a much more functional space now. I love that for us. We've got the LCD there, the LCD there. And of course we could watch ourselves shower because we're just weird like that. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm thinking, I'm thinking we're back. 
Oh, that's so cool. And in that case, we might as well pop this one off, put it over here, and make this whole space more functional. Oh, I'm absolutely in love. This is such a good idea. And this whole area here becomes, we could have like a little planter, a little planter area. There we go. It's gorgeous. It's absolutely gorgeous. And that's why we use the half blocks on the edges so that we would have space to prop up the walls. Oh my God. I can't believe we've done it. There we go. He's actually invented, he's invented hygiene in 2024. Someone give this man a medal. Hygiene in my gamer paradise? Never. No. Oh God. Hydrogen, which reminds me, we need more e equipment of every single kind. Uh, we are, as the kids say, a little low on everything. All right, well, let's move over our to do and to done lists. I think that's step one here because this was cool, but it certainly was not the final form of the playthrough. This this is this is feeling a little bit more final to me. So we got to go in here and we got to set that to text. Perfect. OK, the Res the Capri Sun is no longer on the table. And unfortunately, uh, I mean, there's only one thing we can call this, and that is, of course, the love bug. That is that is the only thing that we are going to be naming that rover. You cannot change my mind. Okay, so the love bug needs to not be resurrected, rather, but repaired. We still want to do all of this stuff over here, but we are now also going to want to add a crane. A crane would be a great idea. And we might also want to redesign the grinders. That might be necessary. I don't know if that's like I have to do right now, but it's definitely one of them. Also, if that's going to be the one do list, then this should be the two done list. I, it's it's It has to be this way. I don't make the rules. Okay, that gives us the unique opportunity here to put down another light source. You know I love me my light sources. And honestly, how about just some mood lighting with a panel? Could do the quarter lights. Quarter lights, are they've been working well for us. You know what? Send it. Send it down Main Street. And uh, that can be a slightly more pleasant color, maybe, than this uh, industrial orange we've been doing elsewhere. Perhaps a soft... What's a good bathroom color? Perhaps a soft white. Maybe something like this. Yeah. That's more like it. Lovely. I think it's exactly the right time to just put down some of these side walls right now so that we can start planning around them, right? This just seems sensible to me. Again, the crane is, is very much not permanent, and that also then allows me to start planning the ramp. I think that's the next thing I want to build. Uh, it's one of our core critical systems, and it'll allow us to get this thing off the ship and back on and kind of gives us an idea of the final shape of the rear end. Uh, get it? Because it's the butt. Wait, don't eat, don't take the Kevin steak. Oh no, he just ate the raw steak. Oh, that's rough. That's, that's definitely a Kevin steak for sure. We are going to have to paint this ship at some point. And the, the thought of that is, is daunting. I won't lie. It's, uh, oh, there's going to be so much griebling. And investing in a welding ship about 30 hours ago would have been, that would have been the smart move. Learn from me. Okay, cool. Most of this will probably become windows at some point, like actual, like, lookout windows. In fact, why don't we just do that right now? Uh, I don't want it all to be windows, but some of it's definitely going to be windows. There is a window wall, like, plus block, isn't there? Oh, I guess not. Okay. Uh, well, uh, what a better place than any to put right here. That'll work. Yeah. So, give me a window wall, window wall... Window wall. And you know what? Actually move all that up by a block because I like having a... I like always having these basic armor blocks available. They're just they're just so handy. These ones right here. The light armor block and the uh, half slope block. There we go. The two by one base. That's the one. It's just... I don't know. I just They just make up like the majority of my, of my armor builds most of the time. I don't want to text anybody. I'm a gamer. And I do want the windows to be inverted so that they face out. Do you know what I mean? As weird as it sounds, because I know the texturing is going to be on the outside. Uh, that's actually fine with me because I want the space on the inside available for other things. Yeah, so I think we'll do that. I think we'll do that. Did I just did I just make this windows all the way through? Yeah, like what do we lose by just doing that? Nothing. Okay, do it. Maybe not all the way down. Maybe we stop it just there. That seems sensible. And I think what we're going to do is we're going to have this side of the ship be more like habitation focused. And the other side will be more of a like industrial military area. We'll probably put the assemblers and the refinery back on that side, just because they were there, you know, sort of traditionally, as it were. Oh yeah, much better choice, much better choice. Yeah, there we go. And then I, I like I like that the back is sort of less accessible. That's going to ultimately become part of the sort of industrial segment. Okay, cool. With that done, we can now start planning this ramp. 
Now there's two ways we can do this. We'll need to use a rotor either way, right? Like the rotor is going to be what spins the ramp up and down and we'll use the little same little rotor trick we used before to attach a secondary like stability one to it. So let's grab a couple of rotor parts. Do I want to put the rotor sort of here and maybe make these slopes so that it can bend in and out? And then the rotor is captive. We could put it on the edge, but it kind of clips over. I don't love the way that looks. We could also put it internal. Like we could carve out this space and put the rotors on the floor level. Ooh, that's probably a much better plan. Okay, so rotor there. Rotor there. Cut off this piece. Uh, well, I think I have been traditionally doing the right-hand rotor as the dominant one. Yeah, so we'll use this. This, this is, there's any really rationality behind this. It's just what I've been doing up until now. Consistency is simplicity in many ways, except the ones that you think about too much. Also, dude, are you seeing the CO2 emissions coming out of this thing? It's damn disrespectful. Exhaust pipe is straight up just pumping, pumping carbon. Min you know what? You know what? Frick this planet, dude. I've been stuck here for a year. I'm, I hope it all burns down. Okay. That being said, I think it would be a smart idea if we made part of this a ramp. Oh, let's let's design the ramp first. So in order to build the ramp, we're going to have to get kind of silly with it. We're going to need to use blast doors. These are blocks that were intentionally added into the game for this exact purpose to be built into kind of uh, ramps and pieces that you know are going to have to sort of move over and collide with other ones. They're intentionally, their, their collision area is intentionally smaller than the base game blocks. And so they tend to do a lot better at this sort of thing. So let's just explore this idea somewhat, shall we? Okay, give me a rotor part right there on the end, and I should be able to fit that in there. I would like to claim that for my own, and then I just want to do some tests with this before we before we say it's good enough. Yeah, we're definitely going to have to make this sloped if we want to angle this backwards at all, or move it out a block. I think we'll just slope the, the base there. All right, so let's, first things first, you get, you get turned off and we're going to attach the rotor head. Excellent. So what we're seeing is now that rotor, the displacement is super high. So what we're going to want to do is drop that uh, probably to zero on both fronts. I think the other one's pushing out. Now it's just set to zero. Well, let's pull it back to negative 25 there. What did we set these ones to? We should just mimic this, because this is stable. You're at negative 20. Okay, so set them both to negative 25. Let them rather be in tension, pulling against each other here. That seems to work. Okay, cool. Uh, now, if I turn this on, if I add some velocity, so we go that way, is it going to be able to turn through 360 degrees? It should. Yes, you see, as you can see, the mesh does not collide with these blocks. That's what these things are good for. Okay, fantastic. So now will it will but that's that's the base point, right? Like that that this side intentionally has lower collisions. It does get stuck on that end. That's completely fine. Okay, so let's do a little bit more testing. We want to go negative the other direction. Let's go to like 5 RPM. Where is that going to end up? So this is the angle that the ultimate gate would collide with. And honestly, that's okay. I think we can still do better though. I think we can still do better. I think if we put a slope on this, it's going to look cooler. So let's do that. And we did lose some lights. Well, that's okay. I wanted to redo them anyway. Alrighty. So we're going to need to add... I want to add these slopes in then. And not on this corner. This corner, we're going to have to get creative with. What's this going to look like? It could just do that one. Oh, you know what? That works for now. I think there's probably a better fit though. Hold on. Let's, let's look. Let's go digging. This is a little bit more dynamic, but I think it's okay. I think we'll just go with the with the standard inverted corner. Okay, great. So that should then give this the space to, re to sort of retract a little bit more organically. And it just gives the ship a slightly more interesting look, right? A bit more artistic. So can we now do a 360 rotation? Probably not. I think we're still going to have an upper limit problem. Oh my god, no. We can actually... Well, I mean, we, we can do a 360 rotation with one block, but we won't be able to do that with all of them. So what we're going to want to do now is find the angle we want to keep this at, probably at an increment of 45 degrees. If I had to guess, probably somewhere here. So 360 minus 45 is 315, right? So let's get to 315 and call it happy there. Okay, well, upper limit, we can lock to 315, zero. That line, well, you know what? Let's let's stop guessing and just build the ramp and then decide. Okay, so I'm not going to weld all this till we've got it, you know, sort of moving, right? But we can put down the basics here. 
How long does this need to be? That's the next question. Five blocks? Oh, one way to find out. Oh, wrong way, wrong way, wrong way. Go that way, go that way, please. Okay, that's too steep of an angle. In order to actually drive this up, it's going to kind of have to be at that angle. I think that's probably the lowest we can get away with. Which means we might actually need to do a compound ramp with two, two rotor points. Now, let's see. Or we could just increase the angle on this, right? Like the way it folds up. That's one way to do it. So, yeah, this would have to get out sort of all the way there. And then come down. That's pretty long. That is pretty, pretty long. Uh, let's put the edges on this and then decide if that's too long. Okay, so we're going to want to... So right now we're at 100 degrees, so that's probably what our lower limit's going to be, is 100 degrees. Maybe one... Oh, died? I was going to say. <laughs> Whoops. Why is this thing not moving? Okay, a little bit of finagling later, and uh, that rotor appears to have bugged out completely, so we're instead just going to use this one. Uh, that's the beauty of the two rotor system, baby. So that is probably the minimum distance we can get away with uh, for this. Yeah, we're going to have to do it like this, I imagine. So let's have a look at what this looks like stowed up. Or rather, better yet, let's... Hmm... Let's put down some more blocks. So what happens is sometimes when you destroy blocks by pushing them into the ground, uh, go figure, uh, the game physics engine just kind of gives up on reality and uh, takes a little vacation to the Bahamas. You know what? Good for it. It works pretty hard, especially with the stuff we do to it. But I was thinking that maybe if we wanted it to function, we should probably push it slightly less hard. And unfortunately, there doesn't really seem to be a way to do that without... Uh, I, I tried reloading the save, logging in again, didn't work. Tried all the usual tricks like, you know, setting, uh, moving the, the lock limit and all that stuff. Turns out, easiest solution is just to grind the, the, the thing down again and, and wait, I suppose. But we don't have time for all that. So what I am going to do, against my better judgment, I am going to weld up all of this. See, this would be a pretty ideal ramp to get up. We could probably manage slightly steeper, but I, getting over this gap is going to be tough then. But hey, that's step two, baby. That is step two. Alright, so now I should be able to gently, and I do mean gently... Lower this with much less torque, much less torque, no, none torque. Okay, that is broken. And I've broken, I've broken this one too. Okay, great. Uh, new plan, turn that one off. Turn this one on. Okay, cool, that one's broken too. Fantastic, I've, I've broken this by touching the ground with it. All right, maybe we can fix this by driving away. That usually fixed all my, uh, my problems in the past. Yeah, now that seems, seems pretty good to me. All right, now that we're moving, is that going to kick the physics engine back into life? Also, yeah, 70 degrees is definitely where we want the lower limit to be, I think. 70 degrees seems good. Um, uh, that doesn't seem right. Uh-oh. Never mind, it's flawless. Wow, I, I really do not understand the forces I am tam tampering with here. This is, uh, clearly, clearly... There is madness afoot in this place. All right, well, the simple solution here is just to cut that thing off, uh, add another rotor. We'll get this right and then just never touch it again. That's the game plan. Okay, great. The physics engine kind of gave up for a second there, but we're back. We're so back. Uh, rotor displacement. Set that up correctly. We want that to be on negative 25. Okay, we've got this thing moving again. You'd love to see it. Let's see what this looks like now at the 300 end of things. I, that, okay, I know what's happening here. That is because this here is set to... That has an upper limit. It should be unlimited. Ew. Oh, god damn it. <laughs> oh, I rolled it the wrong way. Oh. Man, these dreams are sure getting out of, out of hand, huh? Also, the underside is looking great. You know what? Fresh rotors, fresh fresh eyes. That's the that's the name of the game right now, baby. Splitzy makes it look so easy, dude. Matt is a commensurate professional. Not not because his builds function, but because he doesn't just rage at the camera every 22 seconds when they don't. I I cannot comprehend that kind of power. That is he is he is a god among men for sure. Okay, step number 1. Place the rotor. 
Zero degrees is now north. Step two, set up all the stuff you know you want already. For example, you want this to be at negative 25 centimeters. And you want this to be at negative 25 centimeters. For some reason, I, I still don't really know why we're doing this bit, but it appears to be working. Step three, attach the rotor head. Again, attach. Rotor displacement. It won't let me. You know what? Frick it. With zero degrees over here, we want this to be 45, 90, 135 at absolute maximum. So let's type in 135. Great. Let us now apply a velocity. This should now translate itself over to 135 degrees and then stop. Or it's just going to spin indefinitely. Just ignore the lower limit. That works too. You know, it's completely fine, really. Okay, I've managed to do it by uh, accidentally cycling this thing around 16 times, but you know what? That should do it. There we go. We've managed to actually... It, we, we have achieved rotation in 2024. It's just a list of firsts today, isn't it? Okay, now we've got to decide on the length of this thing. All right, cool. That's going to be the rear of the scarab. I don't hate it. I don't hate it. Okay, let's hit a reverse on this and see how this looks. It is going to collide with the ground slightly, so maybe we should just give it some health. Okay, so I'm just going to reinforce the ones that are going to experience the most torque, which is basically, I just need one of these sides to be functional. That'll get us there. Okay, so now, if I reverse this, how's this going to look? I could probably drop the speed somewhat. I probably don't need to move that fast. You know what? That's manageable. Can we take this combo van over this gap, though? That's the only thing that's worrying me. I, I genuinely don't think we can. Probably down will be fine. But up? I don't know about up. Oh, this thing is a speedster, dude. I don't know what's going on with this. the controls, though. I, I can't really seem to actually steer. Okay, uh, step one. Uh, I can see why they crashed. Turn down the power. It's the damn... This is the damn... Say... Freaking... My goodness, yes. <laughs> uh, probably pump up that suspension strength to, to drop it a little bit. It's a little crazy. Uh, definitely keep the height offset up. Push the, push the friction up a little. Okay, how's that driving now? It's got some real Tokyo Drift energy to it, which is... I don't know how to describe it to you, except that it doesn't quite, it doesn't quite, doesn't quite behave the way you think it will. Uh, you know what? This is nothing that can't be solved with the addition of gyroscopes. There are admittedly tremendously few problems in life that cannot be solved with the addition of gyroscopes. Yeah, there we go. I think I'm just used to such unresponsive vehicles. Well, we could just kind of ramp it over, I suppose. That's definitely one way to do this. Okay, is this thing able to... We just kind of use the gyros to change the pitch. There we go. Well, we can get down. I mean, that's step one. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The ramp was a good choice. Okay, it's going to cost a bit to fix, but that's okay. We're just going to park off right there for now. Hop out the side door. And uh, using our windows we've added in here, we can deploy the arms. Yes, how excellent. How excellent. Man, this thing is a damn marvel of engineering. I, I'm real proud of this one. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, look at that. Put the welders on. All right, fantastic. Okay, so now it's just a matter of... Let's move this guy out the way. Or we'll move him in the way? Am I, am I going to get cooked alive here? I, I have a small, a slight feeling I might. But it will be very funny. Okay, the good news? I am not presently being slow grilled to perfection, which is, you know, which is nice. probably move out the way though because what we can do here is we can just get close to the edge of their range we don't have to be underneath it right we can be to the side oh we've, we've got a dog we got one of kevin's buddies coming along for the road trip you see him down there i just noticed him snuggled in the wheels oh that's funny okay well come on buddy uh i guess pack your bags kiddo we're we're going on a trip he's fine he's fine and he's on his way Ah, they really do leave the nest so fast, don't they? All right, well, I mean, you know, we've, we've managed to, to put a new coat of paint on the bad boy. Wait, you know what? I think 
considering we have now fixed it, quote unquote, we probably can put a new coat of paint on it. I'm sure that's what the welders are capable of, right? Control shift middle mouse. Yeah. Yeah, that's the color scheme that fits the theme, baby. Right there, that right there, that's the stuff. Is this a, is this a, what is this? A hydrogen tank over there? Interesting. All right, well, let's, let's go ahead and pull ourselves up the ramp. So I've got to just do some, do some lift off here with the gyroscope. <laughs> Perfection. And then we can kind of just, uh, leop. And we're on. Hey, all right, first try. First try, no notes. That was, that was just about perfect. Okay. Okay, the passion wagon. Passion wagon lives again. Uh, now we gotta pack this up without blowing everything up. That's the real challenge. I love the, I love the exhaust. I love, I love the exhaust. Is that producing smoke now? It is. It is producing a tiny amount of smoke. If I, hold on, if I, can I bump those numbers up? I don't know what that means. Oh, it's, it's like, how much power do you need to be running before the thing runs the smokestack? I, I understand, okay. Run it at 1%. Can I see the smoke? I can with the lights off. The helmet lights kind of wash it out, but I guess we can see it better in the daytime. All right, well, uh, we have a rear ramp. That's absolutely done. We have repaired the love bug. Oh, well, you know what? We'll put a slash in both of these. Next up, uh, I really want to probably get going with the... Uh, well, let's... Okay, step one, finish welding up the ramp. That's got to happen. Step two, start planning out the industrial space. That's uh, that's something we need to do. I think the goal for this one is going to be to design the industrial and living spaces. I, I really want this, this rover more functional. We don't have to weld it all right now, but we definitely want to do that. And we're also going to want a spot to dock this lad. Uh, what we can do is we can dock using a rotor uh, to charge with. That might be the easiest way to do it. We can just have a rotor part on a wall that this thing can like back into and attach to the ship. Um, yeah, that's probably the best way to do this. All right, but I have a thousand million uh, iron plates to move. Uh, bear with me. And you know what? While I'm at it, let's redesign this again. Uh, I think I know exactly what we need to do. We still want a slope. We still definitely need a slope, but we don't have to be this aggressive with it. We can probably get away with these. In fact, I, I mean, we can get away with these. I, watch, watch me do it. I, I'll do it twice even. Yeah, that's a, that's a much better fit, I think. That's, that's definitely where we want to be. Hey, haven't quite finished the entire ramp just yet, but we are down to our last thousand iron plates, which means that, yeah, that's just gonna have to stay where it is. This, this is a lot more steel intensive than I had initially anticipated. So much so that I'm kind of like, well, uh, we need to pick up all of this, man. We're gonna have to be, uh, I think we have like a quintillion iron still stacked up from our mining expeditions, but in the uh, on the off chance we don't, I, I'm gonna wanna be recuperating all of my losses here, as insofar as that's possible anyway. Ah, look at that, we got a whole little bit back, lovely. In fact, you know what, I'm, I'm thinking all of this over here, you're coming with me. It was at this moment that he knew. He huh? f***ed up. Alive? I'm alive! You'll never get this, you'll never get this, you'll never get this, you'll never get this. Oh, <laughs> you'll never get this. <laughs> ah, he got this! All right, cool. We have successfully displaced the local population and turned it into a boarding ramp. Well, about 70% uh, of a boarding ramp. Anyway, maybe maybe 60 on a good day. Let's go ahead and uh, set up a... You know what? You know what this calls for? This calls for a dang button panel. My favorite my favorite tool in this game. The sci-fi 2x1 button panel. Absolute gamer, gamer tool set right here. Excellent. Excellent. So that should just get stowed now. Yep, and that angle looks good to me. Honestly, I think I prefer that angle. So the current... Yeah, instead of negative 135 is negative 125. Let's go ahead and lock that in. So now if I just press that button, the hatch deploys. Excellent. All right, cool. It's not exactly speedy, but that's okay. All right, one nightmare ends, another begins. We now need to, like, make this thing aesthetically fit in and also design the industrial space, which means I'm going to need to move stuff from here... Right? Yeah, because I gotta get access to that. I gotta get access to that and run it down this way. That 
that that that does promise to be exciting because yeah this this shoot here we don't actually have to use this direction um we could branch things off from these pipes maybe that's the safer place yeah because everything behind this sorter is what's being pooped out so yeah we need to put a cross joint here you got a four-way junction for me you got a t-junction you got a four-way junction you do look at that hell yeah perfect now, sensibility says we should actually link these things up, so I'm going to do just that. It's got to be really careful not to cut the ship in half here. Okay, very cool. We have a pipe network now, which I think looks fantastic. There we go. It's all linked up and looking great. Do you know what we can do to like even to zhuzh this up a little further? Is we can... I, I discovered the pipe ends. I really like the way these pipes look, by the way. I was uh, definitely a pipe hater for this series. They've got these little like uh, yellow bits at the top. I think just add some cool color to it and then we can add grating or windows here depending on how we feel just to add just to add like sort of like the design element of it i like this a lot it looks like the internals of an engine that's sort of exactly what i want it to look like so you know no notes there now there is a pretty severe temptation to put another battery in right here but i actually kind of like that it ends we can put more batteries elsewhere so for now that's going to be good enough for this bit so what do we want to work on next? So that's the that's like the poop shoot, right? That's where we throw stuff out. We don't need to worry about that. What we do need to worry about is the fact that these should actually all be T-junctions so that we could take this uh, further down. And if those are T-junctions, then these should be flanged endings. Oh yeah, he's beginning to see. So if this is going to be the industrial slash uh, mechanical segment, and this is going to be the more living spacey area, we need to plan around those things. The only thing in the living space that's going to need anything even resembling a, a conveyor connection is going to be the medical room, right? The corner medical room, this one right over here. And that's definitely going to be our bread and butter. So the connection point for this is on the, well, you guessed it, the corner. So we need to plan around that. How are we going to get this thing to fit in? Okay, well, I need to move the crane. But we could have this come up over here. Uh, it would allow us to break up the windows slightly too, which would be really cool. Okay, well, first things first, let's move the crane. Okay, step one, move the crane. All right, cool. Sans crane, we can now plan correctly. So, as I was thinking, we can have this. We could have it right there, but I think we give ourselves a bit of space. We could have it right there, which means that we would then be able to claim back three window tiles. So we should actually put it there then. Yeah, so we could take back this, this, and that, because we could have something like this then, right there, and then we can take back this one and this one as well. Yes, then we've got, we've got two three wide windows, which I think probably actually will end up looking better. Okay, then you know what we're going to want here? This is going to sound insane, but we're actually going to want a cargo container. Uh, and my rationale for that is I'm going to want a small cargo container to hold all of my bottles and ammo and things like that, the stuff that we don't really want being held in those big ones. Uh, just so that it's easy to access it. Access it? Access it. I don't, know, I don't know where that came from. Okay, so give me the corner medical room again. And we'll have the corner medical room right in there. It'll get con conveyor connection through that cargo container through the floor. So we need to do a line up connection here. Ah, we are reaching the end of the ship here. Okay, fantastic. Look at that. And just like that, we've run connection to that area. So let's get these things on the build planner and get them built this is going to be this is going to be so cool when it works and fantastic we have ourselves a medical room okay cool so uh is there anything i want to do with this space then i think there is i think what i want to do is throw down some decoration blocks and that being said this is a pretty good spot to put in all of our hydroponic stuff so we could have the food resequencer there we could have the Open hydroponics, maybe? Uh, open hydroponics do look kind of sick. Hold on, let's do that one instead. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then it looks like the hydroponics are being fed into this thing. I love that for us. Yeah, 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 yeah. That works. That works really well. And the bananas, oh baby, the bananas are en route. That man is, is, is grinding what looks like a, a dragon's egg. It's the start of Aragon. Incredible. What else do we need from here? Food resequencer, check. Hydroponics, check. Water recycler, soil tray. Those are what we need next, right? So does the hydroponics help us do stuff? It refines water, plant nutrients, and gravel to produce raw vegetables. Okay. How do we get uh, nutrients? I think it's this one. 
that makes it first, right? And then we need the water recycler to, 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 to refine our <clears throat> waste water, quote unquote. And that can probably fit right over there. It's all covered together, middle house. All right, sweet. There we go. We are uh, we are now officially producing all of the daily survival stuff. I mean, we could also move this up to the second floor. He's a mad genius. All that work to just immediately redo it. So I suppose then, in keeping with the sort of beetly aesthetic, we kind of want to go up in short increments like this. And we're going to want to redo the edges here. We definitely want to start the taper a bit, a bit more extremely so that it matches that flow. That Dracula flow. Okay, 666, cool, cool, cool. We've managed to effectively place the slope of this a bit better. She don't hate the way that looks right now. Uh, you are stuck at this angle. That's not changing anytime soon. And I I'll be honest, we could just put another hinge right here and have this fold again so that it's like a two-fold flatty. Uh, this thing will, is going to be able to get over the ramp either way. Uh, the ramp's going to be a little bit vestigial pretty soon, I'm, I'm pretty sure. But, but, that being said... Uh, so there's two ways we could do this. Either we can keep this pretty flat, or we can go up way more steeply, have a big old dome on the back. And uh, as much as I like the way this looks, I think we're going to have to go with big dome gaming, uh, just because otherwise I'm not entirely sure how we're going to fit the industrial stuff in here that we want to fit. I think we're going to have to go higher. I do, don't get me wrong, I love what the I love what the half blocks have done for me, but we might have to get another layer on them. All right, but let's put aside that problem for now because I'm still not entirely sure how we tackle it. And let's instead just put down the core systems. We can worry about the greeble, greeble, greeble later. And we'll probably do that as a time lapse. I'm thinking a pair of these industrial refineries just to like, you know, you got to scale up, right? You got to scale up. And I think that should clear the line pretty well. We could probably actually get away with moving this one over, but I'm fine with this as well. The only reason I was thinking of that is so that these things line up so that the joint is in the same place. Now nah, let's do it. Let's do it. We'll design around it. I, I just, I kind of like symmetry in my builds. I know we could move the medical bay much more easily, but you know what? Once again, if it just works the first time, it's not engineering. It's uh, mechanic mechanical design. I listen, There was a joke about engineers not knowing what they're doing there, and, and I've, I'm too many coffees in to actually make it. I also just know that with all this cutting, I'm definitely undoing some of my uh, lighting work that I did that I worked so hard on, but you know what, c'est la vie. Oh yeah, very nice. Now this 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 sort of like systems map we're building here is actually starting to look really really cool. I'm dead. I'm dead. I'm I have perished. I'm dead. Ah, <sighs> well at least the trip's getting a little shorter every time. Okay, if that's where the refineries are going to be, the assemblers might as well be here too. So let's design those. Also, uh, we definitely need some more hydrogen tanks, and we need to go find another lake. I'm not going to go back to the other lake. That lake is we're done. We've, we, it's, it's ended its time. If we no longer we're no longer associating with it. Okay, we're putting down putting down our foot, and we're doing things differently. Okay, give me the assemblers, and of course you gotta you gotta go with the industrial one. Come on, come on. And in all sincerity, I think we're going to do it on either side like this. And then we're going to be... Oh, that's not right. And then we're going to be moving the uh, the base wall here and having the modules sticking out like we did before. I, I liked that look. Uh, I'd like to preserve it if I can. So we're going to be cutting all this away. Iterative design is uh, it's, it's an art form, to be sure. And it's certainly not one I've mastered. Okay, so we'll do speed modules along the bottom. And of course on top as well. We do want yield modules on this refinery. In fact, we kind of only want yield modules. Uh, so let's go ahead and pop speed off. We don't need speed over here. We just want yield. And then I, you know, as I said that, I immediately lied because I want speed modules on the bottom here. Just, just honestly, sincerely, the only reason for this is that I think it'll look more interesting. I think those are internally symmetrical. And then I want a power module for each. There we go. And that's going to look pretty damn cool once it's all functional. Okay, so we've got to build this uh, refinery first and then we can make the assembler. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's way better. And then from here we can actually walk up into this and access it. And what I was thinking is that this actually also then gives us access to a second floor because we can use the refinery as the staircase to get up. How nifty is that? We can head up here and then walk onto a second floor embankment. Uh, and that's where we can put a lot of our life support stuff. I love how elegant of a solution this is. All right, so the refinery is going to kick back on, which is awesome. Uh, and so will the assembler. I think the refinery is going to be working on probably 
if I had to guess, and I do have to guess, I would say it's probably going to be working on our nickel that we picked up. I don't think there's anything else or wise in the base, except maybe some scrap metal. Let's have a quick look here. Yeah, what are we holding on to? There was, there was some scrap metal. We do have 271,000 iron, though, so I'm not overly worried about running out. And 47,000 nickel, so uh, I'll be honest, these refineries are kind of aesthetic, but that's okay. And it looks like we are indeed out of silicon, of all things. Uh, you would not have been able to guess, get me to guess that. All right, well, in that case, uh, let's fold up the arm and go find a silicon boulder. This is indeed looking more and more scarab-like every day. We're probably going to want to actually turn away from these mountainous canyons and just sort of head off into the savannah in that direction. That's probably a little bit safer. Dude, this rover is starting to look freaking sweet, man. I am... I am sold on the vision. I am. I was. I was in doubt. I was a non-believer, but I am. <laughs> now I see. Let me tell you, this is starting to look absolutely phenomenal. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. This is a real contraption. I don't think we're ever going to quite make it to the uh, to the super super continental size one we spoke about initially. Ah, oh, goddamn trees. But we are probably going to, to to see ourselves pretty happy with this one by the end of it. Uh, I think any th the only reason for that, the only reason I say that is anything larger than this, it basically can't function the way the game's wheels work. They just don't interface with it correctly. Uh, like the ground by it. Uh, cobalt is not what we're looking for. We're looking for a silicon boulder. So we just, we just keep moving. There's another one there in the distance. Let's go find out. There is silicon underground. Could just dig it out of the ground. Let's see what that boulder over there is made out of though. Hey, and look at that. It's made out of silicon. Okay. POV, you are this boulder, and I just rolled up above you. That would be a little scary, I think. Ooh, are we lined up? I think we're pretty lined up. I think we're pretty lined up. I could use a camera down there. That would definitely be a good idea. But we could lock that in place. Turn these on and send that down. Ah, uh, we could go back a little bit. Who needs a camera when I got the old peepers, huh? A little bit further. Okay, maybe we want the camera after all. Yeah, that's more like it. Uh, then I'm going to do something a little controversial here. I'm actually going to talk to this thing and turn that off. I don't want the uh, I don't want the stone being drained out. I think I actually do want to process it. We need some gravel for the hydroponics bay anyway, but uh, mostly I'd like to get the silicon. Yeah, we don't have any. Has the has the list here updated? No, a bit strange. There is a command we can run. I think it's called a learning assembler we can do to relearn. I, I've had this happen before. The Izzy script loses track of the, I think it's called the tags is what it is. It's kind of like the the, the item descriptors the game builds for the, the different ores. It kind of loses them somehow. And uh, we had this in the Sudoni survival series and you kind of just got to relearn it. It's the easiest solution. Okay, that looks pretty good. Let's, uh, oh, we've actually got controls down here, don't we? Let's use them. They're a little further away than they were before. Uh, reverse the piston. And we're just going to ride that up. And then we're going to back off. Because I would like to drill the other half of this boulder. Okay, show me the refinery. Currently processing stone. Okay, so if I look at the ore. Now, I was told previously that if you want to get the refinery to re process a specific resource without Izzy's, it will just pull whatever's first in your cargo container. Let's see if that's still true. Yeah, so right now it's just doing the stone. You know what? That's actually completely okay with me. Okay, send that back down. I'm really loving how this thing's starting to look mad. It is, it is really coming together. Perfect. Yes, there we go. Okay, lovely. That worked just right. Pull it back, turn off the drills, and call ourselves happy with that one. So now we should have made those components. Oh, we are making superconductor too. Fantastic. We should have made those battery components. Let's uh, grab this. Yep, that worked. And we've got two yield modules. Oh, yes. All right, we got two fully functional systems. That's incredible. And this right over here looks like a pretty solid hard point to mount the engine thruster clusters on again. All right, cool. Well, then, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to spend some time um, getting all of this stuff made up and produced. And uh, we'll probably weld that up and then we'll call this a huge success. Rather astonishingly, we actually have enough gold to make the, uh, I think, 80 superconductors we needed to build those yield modules, but there we go, we've done it. Two refineries, two assemblers, I think that looks absolutely incredible. Um, there's no need to have 
access to the space here, right? For the simple reason that we just can't really use it. Uh, you also can't flip the models on these things. I have tried. Uh, there is a mod that allows you to do this. It allows you to mirror the uh, like the, the models like, you know, th vertically or, or horizontally. You can flip the way they're oriented so that the stairs would be on this side. That's okay. Um, it just means this one's not as accessible, which means we can actually close this in in stuff if we need to. And what I was thinking is what better place to put some gyroscopes? Just kind of bury them back here. Uh, we need gyroscopes and we need them soon. So we might as well make use of this space. Put one right there and put one right there. Uh, that's something to think about. We actually need to be able to walk here to interface with that button. So this cannot be an empty spot. Instead, this is going to need to move around. So that's going to become a pipe end like so. Perfect. And then this right over here needs to be something else. Hey, maybe one of these, actually. One of those uh, one of those daily needs blocks. That could work pretty well on the floor, right? Nothing wrong with that. It's just all I'm thinking is we need somewhere to put this. And this space fits. So you know what? If the, you know what they say, if the shoe fits, wear it because yeah, your shoes are expensive and that looks way better. It's the same thing as before. This needs to be swapped out for an end piece just like aesthetically so that it looks better and then what can we fit in here we could put another water recycler but i don't think that's really the place i think instead some enclosed hydroponics might be the key hey there you go and then we can put back this block hey very nice okay this is starting to look this is starting to look real good now oh yeah oh yeah and then straight up same stories before a couple more gyros right over there oh yes dude that is looking so good that is actually looking so good. Oh, what a win. What an absolute win. Okay, now we can we can continue this. We can continue the ridiculous uh, climb we've got going on here. But I think that that is a pretty good space to, uh, to, 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 to put a pin in it for now. So we've definitely successfully designed the industrial space. I think that can finally, finally be moved onto the to-done list. Uh, the designing the living space is pretty close, and I kind of want to focus on that now to sort of wrap that up as well. Stick the kitchen over there. Let's have a cool little bar. I love that. I love that for us. Let's go ahead and grab this, put these over there. Oh, it's perfect. I mean, it's such op such optimally designed space. Uh, what else do we have on, on offer here? We've got an inset kitchen. We've got a cargo grade freight one and two, an aquarium. Really? An entire aquarium? Sure. Why not? Why 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 not? Just give me some fish. Do they move? Oh my god, they move. There's hope for us yet. It really fills out that space quite nicely. And then this I think is gonna be the living space. Alright, so we want to set up a bit of a lounge, as it were. That bed right there. Yeah, perfect. Look at that. We can we can pull down the shutters. We can look at the fish while we sleep. We can look at the sky while we don't. Just it's perfect. It's perfect. Okay, a bit of a relaxation area coming up now as well. I think we're going to want some uh, some couches for sure. Something like that. There we go. We can, we can entertain guests. And what are we going to look at? Well, you might think it's the fish. You'd be wrong. We're going to look at the hologram. This right here, the console block. Got to be one of my favorite blocks in this entire game. I think it's so cool because you can display a projection of your ship, which is just so awesome. So if I go ahead and hit this, save that as the scarab right and I go here and I choose the blueprint to display copy it to the clipboard and voila we can look at the projection of the scarab and I think we can make it rotate very slightly as well which I just I just love and then we'll update this every episode I think that'll be really cool well every episode I remember to update it anyway and then scale we can we can bump it we can bump it up to that that looks perfect to me to be honest can you make I swear to god you could make this rotate and then I should be able to put some images on the bottom, right? So, for example, we could put down, put down a poster. You know what? I kind of just, I kind of just like the poster. I suppose we could put our own custom, uh, our own custom stuff over there. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty fun. That I like. That I like. And uh, we gotta, we gotta add a, a bold aerospace logo down there. That's, uh, that's on the agenda. Write that down, Magic. We could have double fish. Is such a thing even legal? Dude, we could have triple fish. Ah, the insect couch, of course, we can get the, the vivarium. Much better.
There we go. Double fish. Is such a thing even possible? Fantastic. And then the final touch, the coup de gras, as it were, a jukebox. Right there. We can play our favorite beats. Select tracks to play in the terminal stream. Hell yeah. Uh, oh, we can show gravity? Oh, that's awesome. Okay, but I want the jukebox GUI. And we have so many things. Give me the, uh, give me some loud music. Brother, what lounge? I was thinking of smooth jazz. I don't know why. It's so intense. <laughs> Sands of the Slave Princess. We got you got it. You gotta throw that on there. What is this? And with that, gamers, I think we're going to have to call it an episode. What an absolute banger this one has been. We have designed the living space. We have designed the industrial space. And we have designed some goddamn fire dance moves, baby. Oh, oh you didn't see that one coming now, did you? Thank you all so much for hanging out today. Shout out to the members and patrons for making this content possible. And every single one of you for watching it. You are all absolute legends. And we could not do this without you. Literally, quite literally, impossible. And I, uh, Magic and I will uh, be breaking it down with you in the next one. Until then, cheers. You made it to the end of the video. Congratulations and thank you. That puts you in the top eh, 3% of viewers. Here's another video that YouTube thinks you're going to like. And here is a list of all the patron and channel member names. If you don't see yours on there, you can find a link down in the description where you can sign up and support this content directly. Uh, if your name is on there, but you probably already know that, huh? So, um, what are you still doing here?